Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KitBadger.com here to bring you what will be part one in the factory to table series. Creating some context, there I was hanging out in the Pacific Northwest, pondering things, and a couple of things struck me. One, I was just kind of thinking about all the pieces of the puzzle that have to come together for someone to go take game, someone to go hunt. You have the weapon, you have all these different components, sling, optics, whatever it is, ammunition. All these things have to come together. Additionally, I was thinking, what would be a really cool kind of backcountry gun to have here to go hunting with? Something that was light, easy to carry, doesn't really need to have like crazy extended range, largely because up here, case in point, shots are relatively close. Like you're shooting in clear cuts and stuff, like the forest is so dense. I was like, what would be a pretty cool weapon? And then it struck me, probably the Minifix by Q. What does all this mean? Adventure time. Join me on the journey. I'm gonna end up going and actually taking part, putting hands on, building out all of this. Mini fix with Q, all the other things, whether it's a sling or optics mount, ammo, silencer cover, all those things. And it's gonna culminate in me taking game. Factory, all the way to table. So, first stop, gonna head out, New Hampshire, go meet up with Q. Spoiler, New Hampshire is pretty cold, but finally made it here. Not a lot of sleep in the airport. A little, little rough around the edges, but going to head inside. And among other things, they actually have a shower here. Time to wash the travel off and get started building a gun. Now all cleaned up, managed to shower, shave, feeling much more human, fresh change of clothes. And I'm back here with... Hi, I'm Brian. I'm one of the engineers here at Q, and we're going to build a mini fix. Yep. Let's get after it. A while back, I ended up doing a deep dive and went through building a fix with Nick. But this being the mini fix, a couple things changed, a lot stayed the same. So what are kind of some of the things that ended up changing with this project? So we ended up changing, the mini fix is a smaller cartridge. So it's the magazine that actually was the, cha the big change. Um, so the, the magwells you can compare going from an SR25 mag on the big fix to an AR15 mag on the mini fix. So we only shrunk about a half an inch in here uh, for the difference in mag size. Okay. But as a result, we had to shrink a couple other parts. So all these parts change by the same amount, but the bolt body's shorter. Uh, this striker shaft is shorter. So we used the same striker tip and the same striker head, uh, but we shrunk it in here just on the, the middle part. Uh, the spring got shorter. The bolt is considerably different. Good. So we we took this opportunity to to improve the bolt. So obviously it has to have a smaller bolt face because the cartridge mm -hmm. size is different. But we got rid of the conical lugs uh, in favor of flat lugs because... What does that do for you? It's an ease of manufacture change. Okay. So holding headspace dimension it is very difficult to find where you are on a cone. But a flat surface is easy because it's, it's 90 degrees to the, the axis of the part. Uh, so we can measure from the bolt face to the underside of the lugs e more easily. Where this, you have to choose a size. It, it was a nightmare. Okay. Uh, and with that, you said there was also, the other piece to this was actually the way you were doing barrel extensions, right? Right. So changes to the extension, the lugs on the inside are flat to match the flat lugs for the mini. Uh, where a big fix has conical lugs in there still. And the other thing that we did, the feed ramps got smaller uh, because of the cartridge. The feed, feed lugs also mm -hmm. shrunk. Uh, and then we cut the chamfers that when you're closing the bolt that help pull it in. So it'll grab. Yeah, we, we cut them from the outside. Uh, which was another easy manufacture thing, but, but these holes in the extension are to actually put the chamfer on the inside to right. interface with the bolt when you, when you close the bolt handle. Very cool. We, we built this fixture specifically to put these parts together, uh, and they, they'll line up the holes so we can push our pin through, and we're using these toggle clamps just to, as a linear force to drive pins in. All right. And then this one swages it so it flares the end of the pin, 
keeps it in. So you, it can't walk out, and it you'd have to actually deform the steel pin to get it out. All right. So it keeps so it contained. It's never and, coming out. Yeah, it never. It's permanent assembly. All right. Or pretty close to permanent. You can get them apart, but they don't come apart on their own. All right, cool. So do you want to actually build this? I do. If you, you want to set this in here. And then just, yep, just drive it. Yeah, all the way to there and that's home. So now your pin's in. We're gonna put the next pin in and we'll swage both at the end. Okay. Um, so we need to thread these parts end up like this All right. with the striker head through it. Whew. All right, and so oh. now we need to swage them. On there forever. Oh yeah, that's never coming apart. All right, so we're gonna put the spring on uh, and spring the striker shaft to the cam with these spring cups. These are what will retain the spring under here. Uh, similar to a Glock or a 320, the way that we retain the spring. And when you cock the gun, as you lift the bolt handle, the cocking piece rides up these cams. That's what pulls the, the striker back. Um, the sear will grab it here. And then this comes back down. Now, then your spring is compressed. And when you fire the sear, the striker comes forward to fire the round. Nice. And so to do this, you guys made another special like fixture to yeah. get this happening, right? We made quite a few fixtures to put this right. thing together. Let's do it. Uh, so this one's kind of neat. We're going to put this on. First step, I'm going to go ahead and put this on. And I want to get this seated all the way down, right? Yep. So now the... Is that seated right there? It is. Okay. This anti-rotation flag go, corresponds with this slot. Right. And if you lean this over to the side, you can get it in there. Oh, perfect. Push it all the way to the bottom. Right. So now, this goes in here. Uh, actually, we drop this first. And this will lock in. Now when you throw that lever over, it's gonna compress your spring for you. No way. Yeah, all the way down in a lock. Right. Now you feed these in from either side and Ooh, nest them inside of the spring. Right. So they'll, they'll go in and down. So you're home. Right. And now you throw the lever and pull the detent and lift the whole thing up till it clicks. Pull your part, yeah. you're done. Yeah, it gets a little stuck. That is a lot of spring tension. Sure is. Not gonna take that apart at home. No, uh, you can, but. Uh, <laughs> Not recommended. <laughs> now that we've got this together, before we put the sear on and then kind of get everything assembled, we need to take care of our bolt, right? Yeah, we need to add a, an ejector and an extractor to the bolt. And we're gonna do that on another special jig. Yet another special jig. All right, here. let's do this. As you just mentioned, to get our bolt assembly together, we're putting the ejector on first, and you did the hard part of getting, <laughs> basically, this taking the place of the pin that I need to drive through here, correct? Right, so now this will keep it from rotating as we drive the pin through, and you wanna hold this on the underside, because as you start hitting it with a hammer, it'll launch that before the pin gets all the way through, so you've gotta control its movement as you hit it with a hammer. And so it's you, gonna be this pin. So you can start this, and then it, as you hit it, you wanna hold it with the other hand so that that slave pin doesn't go flying out. Sounds good. You're done. Bam. And so right. now we just make sure this is moving. Nailed it. Okay. And then our next step is to... So now we need the extractor. Um, and this is going to be just like a AR like bolt right here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got a flared end coil. Uh, yeah. This end's bigger. 
So that goes in here, and if you push and spin, it'll lock in, then they stay together. Okay. So if you want to hit that, and then do you have the pin? I do. Okay. So yeah, that just goes across. And Next thing being next, we want to go ahead and get the sear in, which is this little guy, right? That's right. All right. So I'm going to drop this in and cross pin. Yeah. Now your and contained. now, yes, sears contained. And now with this unit, basically this portion of it complete, we can put all this together now, right? Right. All right. So you said first I need to put this in the overcock position, right? Right. That'll allow you to assemble it. Okay. And then I need to go ahead and capture this. Right. Want that lined up there. And then with this, this is notched so I know the direction of the hole yeah, for yeah. the striker. You want that notch parallel to your striker. And that'll line up the hole. All right. And then want this through like this. And now I just need to pin this guy, correct? That's right. All right. Now we got to get this guy in here and our handle. Now to get this guy together, I'm going to throw all this in here, slide this back. All right, moving on. So our mag catch is going to go on here. It's basically an AR catch, right? Exactly the same. Okay. I mean, same principle. We're using AR mags and all that. So this is an AR mag catch. All right, cool. <laughs> we'll get this thing on here. So we want it backed out of time. Yeah, maybe one we'll turn out. There you go. And since we're flush, we're good to go, right? We're good. All right. So I'm feeling a little more comfortable in my like realm of having done stuff because while this is a unique trigger, we're basically using like the same type of trigger pin and everything from an AR, right? That's right. And so you mentioned I want this spring into this far notch, correct? Yeah, there's a notch in there that is what that spring pushes on to drive your trigger forward. All right. And put our trigger pin through there, I think. There we go. And now selector, you're using radians making these for you guys, correct? That is correct. So now to retain it, you've got the spring plunger. Oh, spring plunger first. Oh, gotcha. And then it's going to go down over it. So if you get that started, use this to hold it down. Just kind of push and slide both together. There you go. Bam. All right, and now are we putting our grip on? Yeah, and detents. And for our grip, we have this spacer, right? But yeah, so that's the grip extension. It's a little accent color piece um, that goes behind the receiver. So it's going to go on from the bottom that way. And we usually need a hammer to get that on there. Pretty tight? It's real tight. Uh, we don't right. want it to be rattly. We need a hammer. 
So unlike a traditional AR, we have our detent for our selector, but you guys have an extra detent going down here, right? Right, and that one retains the trigger pin. Because we don't have the double like spring legs of a traditional AR trigger. Okay, so this spring will go there, and this guy will go in our grip. Bam! Now we just need to screw this guy in. The selector works. All right. At this point, we want our barrel, right? And just like an AR, we have a notch on there. Right. But there's some unique stuff past that, right? There is. So we're still gonna use a barrel nut to hold the barrel in. But once we get it clamped down, we have a pinch screw that's gonna take all the clearance out of the, the extension and bore. And so whether it's the mini fix or the fix, by using that pinch, we're just creating a much more rigid, like essentially package, right? Right. Okay, cool. And so now this guy just go in here. Yep. So those pins will lock right into there. These guys for the and forty inch fans. All right. Bam. Getting closer. So you just said this is the bolt stop, which is going to keep us from essentially dragging that bolt out. Yeah, when you, when you open the bolt, this is what's gonna prevent you from pulling it out of the gun, unless you push down on that tab. Okay. And you're golden. Perfect. Past this, are we going to put the rail on? Uh, hand guard and then rail, yeah. All right. Next up's your hand guard. All right. And this is gonna attach, drawing it in with the draw screw and then pinch it also. So we're going to use this long screw to pull it this way right into the receiver. All right. And this little cutoff wrench helps to get it started. I just use the torque wrench to finish it. So now 50 inch pounds. Perfect. And then now we're going to pinch the... again, which will lock in the handguard really well to the receiver and make it far more 50 rigid. 50 or 40? 50. All right. And now that this guy's on there, next is top, top rail. So we've got recoil lugs that are gonna go into here, okay. and this is gonna compress the spring for the bolt stop. And then the two long screws go in the receiver. Okay. And there's no rock set or any, or Loctite rather. Nope. For any of this, right? No, none of it. Um, just torque holds them down. That'll hold it together. And these three shorter screws will go up Torque here. these now or? Uh, I always torque them all last. I get them all started and then just 
go through and hit them all. Does it matter which end they start on? Bam. So next is the cherry bomb. Cherry bomb. All right. Just threads on. It's going to lock into this taper. And again, because we have taper on taper, we don't need any rock set or anything like that. No, the taper actually is the best way to hold this thing on. It'll never come off. Right here is the one piece. We're actually going to apply a little bit of blue Loctite too, to get this guy put together. Guy in there, torqued. Ready to put our brace on. This being the mini fix, unique, it has its very own brace, which is pretty rad by SB Tactical. Again, as you told me, so I was instructed. A little more uh, Loctite in there. And then get this guy on there. You said this is the last of it? Well, it's just that and put the bolt assembly in. Put the bolt in. Awesome. All right. Torque down. You've walked me through this. We're at the very end now. Very and it's step. taken a while because filming always slows it down. So what is my last step at this point? This is it. You're just going to throw your bolt assembly right in the hole. Line up your rails. Bam. It's done. Mini fix pistol. <laughs> Pretty rad. Looking good. Brian, thank you so much. Really appreciate your help, and I'm super excited to put some rounds through this guy. But again, thank you. You're welcome. And yeah, this is ultimately part one, building this guy out. I'm gonna move on in part two to building a silencer. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. In his pocket, just his life, his family was a rod on the MT. Because someone will say something. It's the internet. I know. <laughs>